Oh, yes, we're on. Hey oh. guys, um, give you a couple of minutes to join in. All right. Um, so today I've got Jason Lenny from New Zone Comics Creators. Uh, he's an events promoter, a promoter for um, for Kiwi Comics and for uh, a um, anthology series called Fun Time Comics here in New Zone, which is high quality. I have to tell you that it's high quality graphic novels that are really, really good. I have a couple of them. I want to get more. So uh, it's my pleasure to have Jason on. Uh, we've been trying to arrange this, but as you know, with all everybody being busy and uh, with lockdown, with family time, all those other things you got to do, uh, try to um, get as much work done as possible. We've been back and forth trying to get the right timing, as we do, as I've done with everybody. So it's not a new thing. But he just wanted, you know, just wanted to let me know that he felt a bit sorry that we weren't able to do this earlier. But just want to let him know, and you guys know, this happens with everyone. Me personally, I usually just knock it um, five minutes before time. Sometimes I have to say sorry guys can't do it my health isn't good and so i want to introduce you to jason and i'm going to let jason um talk about what he does who he is where's he from take it away jason yeah cheers cheers uh, thanks Aru. um i mean look as i was we were just having a wee chit chat before we went live um how how i got involved with this whole scene was uh in 2001 um i happened to meet another Kiwi comic creator, Andrew Keppel, who was doing a regular, a daily web comic called Goodbye Cruel World at the time. Reached out to him, got to know him. He told me about Funtime Comics, local comics group here in Christchurch, doing a monthly workshop. He invited me along. And I remember my first workshop in October 2001, which that's crazy to think that's, going to be 19 years this october yeah. yeah um and at that point you know i was i i was a i wasn't i hadn't even started my design degree at that point so i was studying a um foundation art certificate at hagley college down here which is a community college um with plans to hopefully get into polytech to do a bachelor of design which is where i ended up going um yeah yeah but um that, that's how I initially got hooked into fun time. Um, I got dubbed new boy because at that time I was the new boy. I was the new recruit. Um, and that's how I got to know um, the likes of Jared Lane, Isaac Freeman, Darren Schroeder, who was the editor of fun time at that time. Uh, the boys, mm -hmm. sisters, Ruth and Deborah and um, the likes of Tony Scanlon, Bob Gibbons, all those um People have been with fun time for you know longer than I have, so that's just going back to two thousand one. Uh, I attended my first Armageddon in two thousand three in Wellington because it was a crew from Fun Time going up to Wellington to run a stall. That was part of the New Zealand Comic Creators. It was a totally different scene back in two thousand three, and it's evolved over the years to where it is currently. I'm sure we'll go into that discussion. Um, but yeah, that was my first introduction to Armageddon. We didn't have it in Christchurch at that time. And then I went to 2004 as well, helped out again. And um, eventually Armageddon came to Christchurch. So then fun time started having a stall at the show down here. So yeah, that's just a bit of my background with um, fun time and my introduction to New Zealand comics at Armageddon. Oh, yeah. Back to you, Aru. How many, how many people, um, you're, you're based in Christchurch, so how many yes. people um, in total are in this uh, Funtime Comics group? Um, it really fluctuates anywhere from half a dozen through to the largest workshop we had was 17 people. Um, yes, right. a few years back, and um, we were bursting at the seams when there were 17 people. Um, mm. For the last 18 months, we've been having the monthly workshop at the new Christchurch Library. So that's called Two Ranger. And you know, when that opened up, they were really keen to get local community groups using their spaces. So mm. uh, Jared Lane from our group reached out to them and managed with a bit of swindling, hooked up a deal um, yeah. to get us a space there monthly. So yeah, we've we've been there for the last 18 months. And look, you know, it's a type of a casual thing. Um, it's yeah. the second Saturday of every month. We get together, we draw comics. Um, traditionally, we would have a tea list of everyone's drinks, but, you know, that's evolved now into the coffee from the cafe and the library. Um, yeah. But it's a really cool space. And, yeah, at the moment, we 
the numbers are probably have been on that lower side. Um, but what what we find is with time, um, the groups sort of come in, and you know you'll pick a person who comes along, and they'll invite their friends, and then they'll yeah. be part of the group for a year or two, and then of course just you know as life um, happens, they get busy, they're taken off in different directions. Um, there, there was a few years uh, where I wasn't very involved with fun time. And that's yep. just because life was busy for me, other things going on. And yep. then, you know, I was quite really keen to get back involved and back re reconnected, um, which is what I did. And, and in fact, actually, um, going back to about 2013, 2014 is when I got reconnected and with fun time, calm, having a couple of years away. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was around that time I actually started getting involved with helping out running the New Zealand Comic Creators space at Armageddon. It's a really and, nice, uh, yeah. it's a really nice space you guys got there, and I think it's um, it's one of the better spaces that you have. And I think uh, one of my things I always <laughs> have is when I look at um, local creators is that the audience somehow thinks in their in their mind, and it's not just us. It's every culture you know it's like it's just every culture uh in the world where if you would if if you're your your own countryman you sort of look down on as a creator and so on i think you've uh, we've might have lost lenny there with um lenny can you pop out and pop back back in i think it's your connection there is a bit um iffy let me see if i can do that again nope he's still thinking but yeah as i was saying that uh What's happened is um, that over time, people tend to think that like just because you're a Kiwi, other Kiwis will think that you, your your creations aren't that good, and it doesn't add up or doesn't isn't as quali quali uh, quality as overseas creators. So they just pass you by and they want to spend their money. But the um, one thing I want to talk about here is um, with Armageddon. If I can see, uh, let me see if I can get a uh, Lenny back in. Not sure how he um, dropped out. It's been. All right, he's coming on a different one. Let me get rid of that one, and we're back. Sorry about that, man. Um, I've been fighting right. this whole time during the whole time during lockdown. Every time I'm on a video conference, it's either my Wi-Fi or the internet's overloaded and it drops off. So I've just um, connected to mobile data. So actually, no more issues. Cool. Yeah, I was saying cool. that, like how, I, like uh, before we get into, I talk about um, again in itself that, like when you, um, you know, when people see you at events like that you get uh, you kind of like have to fight for the audience or for the sales because everybody kind of thinks that hey i'm here for the overseas creators i'm here to get my signature from overseas creators but one of the things about um that you know myself as an artist and so on understand is that i have come to understand is that you we got to get rid of that out of our head that when i look at stuff like fun time comics and what uh, what adrian Kennard is doing with his um Earth's End publication and what, you know, what even um, Bill's doing with his um, Beyond Beyond Media uh, releases. These are quality work. And like I said at the start, that you guys with the Fun Time Comics have quality work in there. Otherwise, you wouldn't have it in there. So um, before we get into Armageddon, tell me about the work that you guys, um, you know, the artwork that goes and the creative teams that you guys put into Fun Time Comics and what it, it actually is about. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it's... So Fun Times always had an ethos that it's really community based, and um, it's not about shutting the door on anyone. It's actually about welcoming people in, and that doesn't matter who they are, what walk of life they are, um, what their level of art is or their writing mm -hmm. skills are. It's just been an open platform, and you know fun time comics has been going since 1991 so that's coming up 29 years which is incredible yeah. for a new zealand um group and, and publication um and the two things that probably have been the lifeblood of that is the fact there have been monthly workshops that happen and as long as you've got a like mind sorry a group of like-minded people who love comics or love the arts yeah. they get together we, we talk we chat and, you know, I said before, you know, there's people from different walks of life. So sometimes there's some passionate discussions, debates. Other times we're suddenly geeking out about the latest comic thing going on or the latest Marvel movie. Yeah. And that's sort of that culture behind it. The publication is sort of a 
it's really a reflection of that. Um, Darren Schroeder, who was the editor from the early 90s through to mid 2000s, and you know, he had an open door policy, and it was um, we put a call out for submissions, and then whatever came through. Look, and as time's gone by, that um, the product has evolved. When Isaac Freeman took over the editor, um, he sort of continued on from what Darren had established, um, but with Isaac's own. Isaac had a bit of experience in, in the world of web and um, more comfortable in using, you know, design software and stuff. So he sort of brought that aspect in it and then sort of ramped up the publication standard. But it was still that open door policy. Um, and uh, like anyone who puts their hand up to help out with fun time, you only find yourself that the weight of the publication world is on your shoulders and that happened to Isaac. Yeah. Life got busy for him he had to stop um fun time just took a hiatus um yeah. i got, got involved in 2014 when i put my hand up and said hey it's really sad that fun time's just been put on hold um i'd seen what damon keen was doing with faction and yeah. was really in, was really inspired by that work and you know mm. at that time i was actually i was setting up my design and print business and i was like hey um I love the, I love what yeah yeah I love what Dame One was was doing with faction. This is really good, you know. And like I said, like the oh, yeah. quality of work that we put out in New Zealand is is on par with whatever the US or uh, the world puts out. Yeah, and and faction was a very highly polished product. I mean, it, it is it's absolutely gorgeous. And unfortunately, that's taken a hiatus. But well, this is the nature of the beast. You have few people willing to put their hands up they put all their time and energy and blood into it and um you know it's voluntary so there isn't any real return apart from the satisfaction of doing it and um so you know with fun time it was like hey wouldn't it be cool to reimagine so you know this was the last fun time um when when isaac was the editor that he put out and yep. we were still the A5 size stapled, you know, it's all it's all black and white art. Um, but this was affordable and yep. it's what we could do. But as print technologies improved, suddenly it was like, hey, there is a way to actually print fun time at a low cost price in full colour. Yes. And bringing up a bit of that production standard of faction, mm. we can turn this into... Yep. Let me grab it into this. So really exactly. that transaction, the transition 2014 was from our issue 26 to 27. Yeah, and I have and, that cover. And I think that's what really yeah. got me, right? Uh, because when yeah. I saw that, 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 gra you know, that collection of, and the way it was packed in a, you know, in a, in a graphic novel package, it really got me. I was like, right, this is something that I can um, sell in the shop or something I can put on my shelf and show off to people and go, hey, this is the good stuff that we can, we as creators in New Zealand, as comic book and, you know, uh, community actually are capable of, you know, and we can actually do this. And so why, you know, why aren't we getting the, you know, the promotions and stuff? So, yeah, like I said, you guys do sure. a great product. So going on to promotions, let's get, get go on to Armageddon. Um, back to that. Yep. So how did you guys get involved with Armageddon? Okay, and, and look, I know I go off on long-winded stories. Um, I, I, so if you want to stop me at any time with a question, feel free to do so. Um, sure. Like I said, I attended 2003, 2004 Armageddon with the group from Christchurch, went up to Wellington. We were part of the New Zealand comics space. Um, at that stage, it was multiple stalls, mm -hmm. um, all with you know their own 1800 table selling yeah. directly to the public um isaac freeman's told that he tells the story really well because he was heavily involved at this point that what happened was after a couple of years it was actually just proving a bit of a logistical nightmare to bill so bill's the guy who owns and runs armageddon expo yeah. and you know as you mentioned he's a comic creator he's right himself so he loves comics he loves supporting new zealand comics mm. but the format of the New Zealand comics area was becoming a bit of a headache and 
you know, if you think about, Bill's got a million things to think about with that expo and, you know, it's grown right. to the size it has. And as corporate as the expo has become, it's still yeah. it's an opportunity for him to give back to what he's passionate about, and that's the local comic scene. So mm. it was realised that you know there was a few issues that happened as well, a few controversies with some comic content that was adult themed getting into kids' hands. It, it wasn't it wasn't actually as bad as it sounded, but there was a bit of a um, a bit of a hurricane and a teacup over it, and it was realized that what we'll do is we're going to have one space it's going to be New Zealand comic creators. We're going to deal with one person who's going to coordinate it. And the space is going to represent all creators across New Zealand. So whether you're in Dunedin, when you're in Kaitai, you can send your work to the comic creators group and they'll sell it at Armageddon. Um, so, and the way it worked was it was pretty much a person in each region who was willing to put their hand up and run the table with a space. Mm. At, at that region i went up to my first auckland in 2013 when adrian was running the space and that's when i first met damon with faction and mm -hmm. um saw, saw the great you know great things they were doing with the space um between 2013 and 14 adrian and kelly sheen were setting up earth's end um publishing yeah. and realized that they need their own space at the expo so like well they couldn't actually no longer run the space um effectively for the next three to four or five years there was a group of from christchurch coming up to run the space in auckland yeah there you go oh, Moa. Yeah. so um yeah really we we sort of joked about it. it was a bit ironic that the comic guys from christchurch were coming up to auckland to run the comic space um mm. We were very grateful to Adrian and Kelly who have thought it would do a bit of the behind the scenes stuff with bringing their stock into the expo. And, you know, since 2013, I've attended each, every Auckland. Um, what's given me the opportunity is actually been able to go up and, you know, showcase the latest fun time. Um, yeah. And that's been the drive, the drive for me. And like every year that comes by, oh, will I do the next? And it's like, hmm. when there's 24,000 people coming through the the showgrounds um, hey it's the best place to have the latest issue that we've published so yeah. as a direct result of being involved with the fun time community here in Christchurch and pretty much being the publication manager really is I found myself being involved with New Zealand comic creators and as you find that when you're in this when you're in something that's very niche and you're willing to put your hand up, you suddenly realise, oh, there's only a few people around me and I've suddenly thrown myself in here to volunteer and I'm passionate about it and I can do it. Cool. So you end up sort of taking too much weight on your shoulders and just sort of carrying it. Um, so I found myself involved with that. Um, but, of course, um, I've been in a position to do that. I've sort of had the time and the passion and the energy to do it. So mm. that's been great. And I've met some really cool people as a result who have supported myself and support New Zealand Comics table at yeah. each Armageddon. Look, Christchurch is cool because Funtime comes along and runs Christchurch. Auckland, we've always been able to attract a few people. Um, you know, I've had support from Nate Tamblin here in Christchurch and Alex McCrone who came up um, and did a few. And we have um, the guys of Surge from Funtime. Mm -hmm. Um, Sean Garia, who does the Legend of Garius, has helped out with a couple of events in Auckland and Wellington. Brent Willis from Wellington, you know, they, they travel to the events. You know, it costs them to be there, but they're doing it for the love. So it's been really cool. Um, each year, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm going on. Back to you. Yeah, no, no, I was just going to um, talk about this um, this placement mm. you guys um, recently had, um, I think, was it, when was the last Armageddon with, uh, where you guys were placed? With uh, with with the U.S. Um, creators, I, I I think it was 2018. Was it 2018 or 29? Yeah, because it wasn't last year. Um, Sorry, let's um, go back. Yeah, so, so who were we placed with? Yeah, you guys were right next to Adrian, and Adrian, um, and next to that was the U.S. Um, uh, artists. And this is the first time I've seen it where that. Your placements, you know, as um, New Zealand creators were right next to American creators. 
And I, that was a surprise to me because usually you yeah, guys were yeah. placed somewhere else around the corner, you know, with other um, solo creators and so on, um, you know. And um, but this time you guys were just like thrust right next up there with everybody, um, you know, with the main mainstream. And um, that was a surprise to me. So tell me, how did you guys get them? You know, get that placement? Mm, yeah, good question. Uh, so that was twenty eighteen, right? Um. Richard Fairgrey, uh, he had he had pretty much helped run Bill's Beyond Media space for a number of years. So in the main comic area, you had Beyond Reality, that's Bill's comics. You had the international comic guests, and then you had Richard with what what he was doing. Uh, when Richard relocated to the states, um, we just approached Bill and said, "Hey, would look." We could help run the space, do a similar deal, that arrangement you had with Richard. How would that suit? Bill was happy for us to do that. Mm. It came with a couple of stipulations that we actually had to run the Armageddon, see, sorry, run the comic space at all four Armageddons. Um, okay. So we did that for the first time in 2018. Yeah. And as you said, it suddenly meant, especially with Auckland, which was you know, always that catalyst event, we're there right next to the the international artists. Um, and 2018, Auckland was our best Armageddon. Just from a sales point of view, we had a really good place in the um, events hall. Um, we were able to integrate, sorry, interact with the American artists. Well, not, sorry, they're not just inter American, international artists. Um, and they're just some top folk that come over to be involved to, to Armageddon. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because we had a really good 2018 in that partnership helping run the comics series. Yeah. And then last year worked well with the regional events in Christchurch, Wellington, Tauranga, but they're much smaller. But then when it came to Auckland, um, we, we got the whole the whole New Zealand comics series got put into a side hall. It was an experiment. Yeah. It was thought that being in this other hall would um, get some better interaction with the, you know, the traffic flow coming through it turned out wasn't wasn't actually a great call yeah. but it was experimental from the organizers so again you know these things evolve and we try to find better ways to do things what worked what didn't mm -hmm. so as of this year uh working with bill mm -hmm. we came up with the proposal that what if we now make space available to individual creators who can come and get a low cost space dedicated to the promotion and selling of New Zealand comics. So mm. this is different from Artist Alley, because yeah. Artist Alley, they can sell anything. So these yeah. are specific comic spaces. Now this was gonna take place with Wellington, um, but you know, that's been moved to August due to coronavirus, yeah. the lockdown. Yeah. And no, then it was gonna take place. We, yeah. we talk, uh, we're talking next year, we're not talking 2020 anymore. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not actually, sure if there's been an update on the Armageddon events, what's going on. Um, so whenever the next one is, that's that new arrangement that's come up and we're gonna put that into action. So we had a couple of people sign up um, for Wellington. So Dylan Horrocks and someone else, whose name forget, it's totally gone over my head. Oh, David, David Tullock, I think, um, sign up to have their own space. So that was gonna be the experimental one, Wellington. So we'll just see what happens. Auckland is a different kettle of fish. That event keeps growing. You've got probably the biggest event centre in New Zealand that it's at, and it's still too big for that space. And so it's it's still up in arms at what's going to happen with the comic mm. space. Yeah. Well, the thing oh. about like uh, <laughs> with someone like Bill, right? Um, like in America, they go Bill like Mike. You know that whole be like uh, you know uh, Michael jo uh, Michael Jordan here we're basically like be like uh, Bill and you're right when it comes to organising stuff uh, you, you know you're always trying to trying to figure out whether uh, okay is this going to work here is it going to work there and you know um, with with what ourselves were doing plunge it was like how you know whenever I noticed that if we put something to the side even though we just did a first one I noticed that the side didn't work. Anything you ever put aside from the main hall doesn't work because people 
don't they sort of give you a sideway glass they don't give you a proper look and i think that's what mm. worked for 2018 and i was really surprised that that's what you know that's why i asked the question because it was such a, a good thing to see this top quality new zealand product up there with these international artists and creators and i mean i i got because i had an hour-long talk with someone um you know and um from from overseas i never got to really sit down and talk with other people and the and one of my things I always get I just get distracted by talking where I forget to buy stuff and I come home going I still have money in my pocket I went with this budget and I didn't come home and and I think sure. um, because it's a four-day event unless you have that four day you don't have that time to um, you know um, to spend there so my my next question is you come all the way from crisis to Auckland how do you guys budget for that? I mean, like you guys have to go, you know, you said you're going to Dunedin, uh, Wellington and stuff. How do you actually budget for that? Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, <laughs> yeah, as, as, so effectively, it's whoever's willing to volunteer, you know, they, they sell fun to get themselves there. Um, so the way New Zealand Comic Creators was set up was that on behalf of representing and selling comics mm. from locals, um, New Zealand comic creators would take pretty much a percentage cut to cover running costs. Right. And, um, you know, we have to ship the comics between the locations and comics are heavy. Um, mm. Especially when they're graphic um, novels. Yes, very, that's right. And, and a lot um, of times people don't actually, um, who aren't in the business, right, don't understand that there's freight involved yeah. and the cost of actually, Hey, it's got to come to me first. Then I got to send it somewhere else. So you got double charges. And, uh, the cool thing about that, about even though you are in New Zealand, you still have to ship it twice, but not only that, then you got to bring it back home. Right. Yes. And so yeah. I think, uh, when people come to such events, they have to, they should have that in their mind that there is someone actually, paying this item to be there in the first place that these creators are actually putting the money not be, even before the um you know it gets in there they're creating it but then they pay for this product to be created then they pay for this product to be shipped and then shipped back home so there's cost involved with that so how yeah carry on i mean like it's just um mm. the logistics of it and the the funds needed so how do you guys go about equating that into all of what you're doing you know, pricing and wise. Oh. I mean, because you, you only can do a one yeah. set of price across the board. You can't actually, if the freight is more, you can't say, well, we're going to add another dollar to that because people are going to go, well, on, on the back, it says this. How do you deal with that? Well, it's, it's pretty much the, um, the, the comic box that does the rounds. Um, if the comic box had air miles, it would probably be doing, be doing quite well. Yeah. Um, look, look, it's, it, it, if one of us is traveling up to the event, and we need to take stock that's how it works um but other times like with last auckland what happened was so 2018 best event ever 2019 one of the worst uh, i don't know if it was on par with our 2017 was a not a good year we got put in the side hall again that was before we did the arrangement mm. um and then 2019 because we got shifted and it was all experimental so sales were low and so what i had anticipated was Hey, great 2018. We thought we'd have the same space. Sale. We're mm. going to base our sales on the previous ones. Suddenly, we, you know, we're left with three three boxes of heavy graphic novels. They pretty much ended up in Adrian's um, house. He had to ship a whole lot back down to me. So, you know, we weren't anticipating that shipping cost because we thought we'd sell the stock. It just yeah. comes out of the funds. And look, there's no real math to it. There isn't even a business model to it. It's yeah. it's. Just, it works and yeah. you know some of the costs will come you know nzcc and fun time are separate and um it's nzcc cup covers the, the shipping cost generally but um you know it, it, you'll have a suitcase of comics we've all been there yeah but we do it for the love of the passion yeah and i think that's that's really what um what i love about what you guys do is that there's a passion and the and a product shows that and i think um to under um, to sort of undermine the fact that's a kiwi comic 
or it's a Kiwi product because it's created by Kiwis doesn't actually equate to this. Because when you look at something like um, of the book I've got at hand, right, Faction, and it's just because um, because Funtime Comics is um, basically put together like Faction and like many other graphic novels, it's not a cheap product. And that, you know, and the fact that it's got Kiwi creators doesn't even matter because it's a freaking excellent item. And, um, you know, we've got our own magazine we're going to be putting out soon. And that's why I was talking about logistics because people don't need to take into cost that it's got to be printed somewhere and not even before it gets put together, then it's got to go get printed, that's going to be sent back to you, then it's got to be housed, then it's got to be moved around. But but all those extra costs that come into it, then you got to pay GST on it and all that. Um, so let's talk about um, how do you guys actually choose what goes in it? Mm, mm. Yeah, um, um, I, I alluded to earlier that, you know, part of that original, um, I don't even know if it was an official policy, but the, the way it worked was it was an open door policy. There you go, policy. Um, open door policy. Uh, look, we take submissions and they go into print. And probably the big one, of the biggest issues over the years is you get a greater influx of content than that can go in. Um, yeah. So I know that Isaac had a box of content that still had to be scanned, and. Um, in many ways, it's a first and first served. You know, we just ask for submissions. They come in. They pretty much get directly in. Um, there's very little scrutiny. I mean, you know, there have been discussions over the years. Do we do we set a standard? Do we what type of content do we want to be themed? But it's really just been open open platform. Um, what what I've found is, like I said, first and first served. We have a digital file. So yep. if the digital file come through, they just get slotted straight in. If it's scanned, oh, hold on. generally, so this is this has yep. got to do with people in the group, not yes. anybody out there. Just the people that's a part of this group, because this is your guys. This is you guys doing your own publication, and it's about your creators, not somebody else just going. Well, here yeah, I'm from Auckland. I want to put this in. It's it's got you know. I'm 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 of the mind that if you're like that. Go over to Auckland, create your own group, get your own stuff done, because then we'll have more product and more uh, diverse, you know, comic books and a, and a yeah, yeah, yeah. way better culture, I think. And, of course, there I, is I that. Think, uh, so a couple of things on that. So, so one, you've got to look at what anthologies there are in New Zealand that create that right. opportunity. Because factions on hiatus, um, that option isn't there anymore. So you've, you've got fun time. You've got... Um, Brent's going to kill me. Come on, Brent. What's it called? Brent's Anthology, Bristol. Uh, Bristol. Um, so, you know, he puts that together as an annual. Um, mm. So there are those two ongoing. There have been other one-off projects. So so what we do is we put the call out. Obviously, all the local, you know, Christchurch mm. fun timers, they'll submit. And then we take submissions from around the country, um, some international submissions. And seriously, they just go in first serve, first, um, first and first serve. What probably does happen is, you know, we know that the local fun time people, Jared, Bob, Tony, um, they generally will have a comic each year. So that yeah. space, like Ryan, Ryan Green from Christchurch, so his um, Sophie and Gil, yeah. you know, that's been a regular for the last four or five issues. So we always allocate that space for him. Um, right. And then the others just slot in around it. What happens is we get to the point, oh, there's more comments that can go in. Well, they actually start going into the next issue straight away. Um, right. So we actually, we've actually haven't, well, as long as I've been involved, we haven't been in a position where we've had to turn anything away or say no to anything because um, it, it's just been the right amount. Or the last two issues, we bumped up the page count. So that's how yeah. we could squeeze in a few of those comics that we didn't have space for previously. Um, we've we've talked about do we go to um, two cop issues a year? They wouldn't be as big, but you know altogether it means you have more page count. Um, but there's a whole lot of logistical issues and distribution issues, time, voluntary, sorry, volunteering to put it together. Um, what I would like to see um, in the future, and you know there was discussion around this last year. Um, 
is it's the biggest problem is a lot of the weight and responsibility falls on one person, whoever's willing to put up their hand. Um, yeah. But it's to get more involvement from the community. Right. So the community itself. So when I say community, I am talking about the local Christchurch fun time community. Yeah. Getting them more involved with putting the production, with the publication together. Mm. Um, and then, you know, whether it's myself or someone else, we can do... So I'm a graphic designer and marketer, right. so I have those skills to put the print publication together. Um, I'm not really interested in editing. That's not my skill set. It's not my passion. Right. I, I love the production side. I love seeing the final product. I love the design. Yes. So the way I see it is we just have a platform that creates opportunity for artists to get their work into print, right. whereas usually there aren't many opportunities for that unless they self-publish. And exactly. um, if you've got a four page comic, well, I'm not going to self publish that. I'll put it on the web. Cool. Right. We'll print your web comic and now your web comics in print. That's great. Yeah. So, yeah, um, you know, we as a local community, we need to have some discussions about how we want to see things going forward. But I'd really love to see more involvement. Again, that comes down to people volunteering um, at the same time. If you sit back and wait for people to volunteer, that's probably the worst thing. So it's about. Yeah. Let's start having those conversations at our workshops. Hey, we have this publication. Um, we need these people to do these things. Who wants to get involved? So, look, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here, and this is what I, I think I'd love to see. So once the world goes back to normal and we start having our workshops, um, you know, we'll start having these conversations. Well, I think um, there will be a need for this, uh, more, more community-based uh, groups, because... While we've been on lockdown, we've been able to look at ourselves very seriously and uh, what can each one of us do and what each one of us can offer to our own community. And a lot of times we've been hidden away into our own little factions, right? Um, and we've been like, um, you know, over here, over there. Well, what, what this has done, it's shown us that, hey, there's a lot going on that we don't see and we need to actually, um, we're able to see now because of what we're doing, right? Like us, me and yep. you're talking here now, you know, we're able to hear from you exactly what's going on in Christchurch and what has been going on in Christchurch in the comics community. Yeah. <laughs> what was going on there? <laughs> Sorry, I, I, it's really cold in my office and I was trying to plug the heater in. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, literally, I'm shivering. You've got a blank, I've got a blanket around me. I'm starting to shiver. <laughs> yeah, I've got the heater just in front of me. So I've just, you know, it's been dreary day to ourselves here. So yeah, I was just wondering what was going on. So, so this has really allowed us the last four weeks, and it's probably in the next couple more weeks as well, to actually uh, talk to each other in a way that we haven't before, where we've just passed each other at events and stuff you know, and I said, oh, yeah, that's that, and that's that. And this is the same here in, in Whangarei, right? And, and in every other city, because we've been so busy, like I was saying, that I'm just, I go to, um, well, I'm a get in, I get to say hi to people that I know, and I go have a, a conversation with someone from overseas, and I get distracted, and I forget that I've had other things to do. And that's my, that's my, I'm a get in over, right? I've paid yeah. my bills, yeah. I've, you know, and that's it. But now we've been able to have longer conversations with other people in our community that we haven't had before. Like the other day, I got to spend uh, over an hour with a, uh, you know, with a funding manager, like of our creative um, thing, live on stream, so that everybody that was part of our, you know, could see it. That who's who's behind and backing us. And um, one of the things is I um, I think that this has allowed us to do is actually see what we have been doing not what you know what we can do but we, what we have been doing and then that allows us to see what we can do and how to support each other going further and i'm i'm of the mind that like look if 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 you think that the world's out there is going to help you well the only people that's going to help you is people in your community because they're the closest that's going to actually help you you know and that's why i always say look buy new zealand products support new zealand creators uh because i know that even though i'm creating myself and I'm trying to get our, our books overseas, I still need to have our own community backing us to 
you know, get behind what we do. And um, and I understand, um, because as a designer, I understand putting things together because, I mean, we just put together a 64-page freaking, um, you know, uh, magazine. And it's a magazine. It's not an anthology or anything like that. And which meant I had to get reviews in. I had to get f f photos in. I had to get uh, interviews done. And Ayla did a great job. And Don did a great job over in America. You know, and having journalists, actual journalists, go interview people that I want to interview, you know, and then putting it together as a designer, putting it together because I love design work and I, I don't like subpar things. I just don't. Yeah. I, it I, I get me. it. Um, I totally get it. You know? yeah, it's that's like, right. yeah. I, I don't want to see this. I, I, you know, I had to choose myself which, which work goes into the 64 thing, page magazine because it was like, this is our first one and I don't want to have things that's already printed I don't want to have things that are substandard. I want to make sure that this product, when it goes out, people go, wow, this is top quality. And this is what I like about what Swantam does. It's top quality. And uh, when, because I don't want to, you know, and that's the thing about, hey, self-publishing is great. And um, you can do that now because you've got crowdfunding and all that. And that's my next question coming up about funding. You know, mm -hmm. you can do all that, uh, but, when you when you have a um, you know when you can put together you know say like faction and a nice little package that you can put on your shelf you can put on your coffee table and go here you don't have to worry about creasing the cover right you know and it's not like a you know magazine and such but but then you can actually show off which is what I want to say I can show off these say here look this is what we as our creators in New Zealand are creating and so you don't have an excuse to say oh it's not going to be good. You don't have an excuse anymore to say that because the quality of printing, as you mentioned before, and the cheapness of it, it's so uh, you know, and um, viability of it is so much better now. And the fact that if you can get online, get a get a funding behind you to do that, you can actually you know lower the cost. And the other thing is, one thing I've noticed is that this has allowed us to actually uh, go because of the um, because of where we are as a nation now. It's going to allow us to actually negotiate the cost of printing, especially when you're in comic books or magazines, that you can negotiate and say, hey, look, uh, yeah, um, it's tough. You know it's tough. I know it's tough. You know, your publisher knows stuff. It's printer knows it's tough. Mm. Hey, um, how about we just ease off a bit and let, let's make some, you know, you know, the pricing on the print is a bit better. And I think this is what, because everybody gets to see what we're doing and um, everybody, it's involved in seeing where we are as a nation because nobody is going to be coming out of this winning unless they're really, you know. So we have to help each other and um, to actually rise up together. Otherwise, you know, we're going to see things become harder for certain groups and better for other groups. But if, if we work together, I think we're going to be able to put go back in to 2021 amazingly well. Uh, but that means that we need to make sure that there's funds available for all these products to get back on thing. I mean, like you said, 2019 wasn't good uh, because of where you guys were placed. But, hey, 2021, people, here's the thing. When when we come out of those, everybody's going to go crazy and in getting involved with things. This is how I see it. They're going to be going to events hard out because they realize they missed out so much. Mm -hmm. They missed out seeing their friends. You know, uh, what was Armageddon, April? Where was um, April? Is it Hamilton? What's supposed to be Armageddon, um, April? Or was it Wellington? Uh, so, uh, so Wellington, Wellington, Wellington. Yeah, so Wellington basically missed out on Armageddon. Um, we're probably going to miss out on October. I hope we don't um, because I always look forward to it. Even though organizing my own, that's beside the point. I still love going to Armageddon and it's just the atmosphere is great. But the other thing is then you've got, I think, Hamilton and then you've got the other regions that are miss, going to miss out. So because yeah, of the got, missing yeah, out of, of the community, you're going to have people just going crazy next to you going, you know what, I need to get to see this, you know, to meet my friends again. Because I especially, especially in comic books, you know, um, people want to see their um, friends again, They're, especially in pop culture and fandom, you know. They want to talk stuff. They want to think. And the, that, that whole community base is very important. This way, every year, Armageddon gets bigger, right? It doesn't go sl smaller. It gets bigger and bigger. And the work there, I mean, from the from the town, um, like from the town hall or 
I think it was like a school hall or something to where it is now. I don't. I think sometimes people don't appreciate what Bill has done and his team has done with Armageddon and what they've done for New Zealand Comics and what, it, you know, with, especially with Fun Time, where they've placed you guys now. Uh, I think I might have lost you again. All right. So when we, when Jason gets back, we'll talk about the funding behind. Here we go. All right. Get rid of that one. Bring him back on the other one. Yep. Sorry, dude. We lost you again. You're back on. Uh, that was, yeah, mo yeah mo mobile data, data is out. out. So I'm back on Wi-Fi. <laughs> Sorry about and that. Just, and just first of all, there's an, there's an echo. There's an echo I can hear through your. Oh, okay. I'll turn my one down. So, all right. Sorry, bud. Let me turn down my volume. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so can I just um, make a comment? Let's talk about um, let's talk about um, funding. How do you guys get funded? Cool. Yeah, uh, funding. And and just the other thing after that, um, maybe we'll have a chat about Armageddon. I'm just seeing that Tauranga and um, Christchurch have been moved to July, whereas they were to be early June. So. Oh, July this year. You're talking about? Yeah. So that. Christchurch was going to be um, Queen's birthday in July, and then Tauranga is the weekend after. Hmm. So they've been moved to July. So let's just see if if it happens. Uh, if it happens, yeah. And then Wellington yeah, is scheduled. Wellington is scheduled for all, uh, August. Yeah. Yes. Well, we were we were supposed to be in July. Uh, I think 11th, 7 eleven, seven uh, eleven for plunge, uh, and we had to postpone that. And I was like, well. The work I was supposed to do on that has been doing this, and um, I'm hoping that maybe we can do it later, like in September or something. Um, but who knows? Because we still don't know if we're going to get the all clear. And you're right. We, you know, let's hope. Fingers crossed that it happens in Tauranga. Um, mm. All right, let's talk about how Fun Time gets funded. Yes. Okay, so um, Fun Time is self-funded by the sales from the previous issue. Right. It's that simple. So we have never kickstarted. Look, yeah, you know, Fun Time's been going twenty nine years, so it's long right. before we had kickstarters and all that. Uh, in the, I don't have all the copies. My, all right, we seem to have lost um, Jason again. I think his Wi Fi is playing up. Um, Hopefully we can get him back. So we'll just wait on him. But um, like like Jason said, Fun Time gets self-funded um, from your sales. Uh, so yeah, just more on that. So you guys get funded from previous sales. Uh, yeah. I guess you might want to tell other people in the um, house not to use Wi-Fi while you're on while you're on this on Netflix. Um, I could move closer to the Wi-Fi, but it means I'll be sitting in a gloomy hallway. We can it's do fine. that. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's seriously, it's been a it's been a major problem during lockdown. Um, yeah. look, back in the day, when this was fun time, um, printing costs were a lot, lot cheaper. Mm. Mm. As we went to color cover, yeah, and increase, and now the larger format, graphic novel format, perfect bound. Production costs have increased, mm. although it's still less expensive than traditional offset color printing and we don't we don't digital print either so we use um what's called a true press it's inkjet high speed inkjet is sort of revolutionized the world in terms of small runs of um, any types of books from novels through to graphic novels um yeah. magazines uh newspapers so that's that's how we do it but as the production standard has increased we've been able to increase the sale price so right. really you know we um, we make a good return, but of course that return is what we need to print the next one. Last right. year, after that poor sales at Armageddon Auckland, you know, we left um, with a stack of com with a stack of graphic novels, not much funds back in the bank, and we're like, yeah. uh, "How are we how are we going to do this?" Um, that's been focused more on private selling, um, just yeah. you know, and you know, we're gonna well, we're gonna talk about, upgrade our talk about website, selling, et just talking about selling, right? Have you guys been doing this online right now during lockdown? Have you gotten up and go, well, okay, uh, hey, how about one, one, you know, one of you guys just start, um, you know, doing a lot of videos promoting this? 
mm-hmm. you know, with this product because, uh, like I said, it's a good product um, and it's a and it's great art. It's um, great storytelling. I mean, I I just collected for the art, the fact that I have a history history of New Zealand comics. You know, just like I mean, I'll, with um, Adrian's work, right, on his books. Uh, the same reason I have this, right. Um, this incomplete works. The same reason I have this is because I want I want to show people that we have a great creators and writers in New Zealand, and same you know and everybody else's work, so that I can say you know that we have quality creators in New Zealand. Um, so yeah, back to have you been you know have you been able to during this lockdown have you been able to promote your guys self online um, through social media um, mm. for sales? Yeah. No. Um, and look, th- there's no reason not to. It is purely uh, who's willing to do it and yeah. as people taking the initiative to do it. So I can I can naturally do that if I have the yeah. time to. Um, I've been fortunate enough during lockdown that um, I've had a full load of graphic design work keeping me going. Yeah. So I've, I've been working the whole time. Um, that may dry up, um, but yeah. still. So I've been I've been fortunate in that sense. Um, I, I've been working on some stuff behind the scenes, like to help get our webs. All right, I'm going to have to get actually to um, move into your gloomy room, so we can be closer to your um, web. Um, to your uh, connection, because otherwise we're just going to keep losing you, bud. No, he's still... um... Sorry, guys. Um, the camera for Jason's just stuck at the moment. Will his Wi-Fi is, but thing. I think he's going to move into the um, another room, and we'll be back with him again. But yeah, we've been discussing fun time comics, uh, and um, if you if if you go to the New Zealand Comics Creators page, you'll find that um, there's all these different creators there on that page. You know, for quality quality stuff, quality art, quality writers. And you know they're part of the anthology that is um, Funtime Comics, and so I'm, I'm interviewing um, Jason Lenny, uh, who's uh, a publisher and coordinator for that. Hopefully, um, we'll keep having back soon. But I think one thing, um, there, like I said, like there's certain people that have a lot of job, a um, lot of work right now, and there's certain people that aren't. Uh, because of what work they're involved in. And um, so when it comes to creating stuff, like myself personally, I, I have a lot more time than my other fr- um, um, other bus- um, partners do because, you know, uh, I, because I have more time, I'm able to do more. I'm able to do a bit more publishing, a bit more creating art, whereas another person who works and stuff is uh, unable to. So he's you know, he'll, he's got time to spend with his family and he needs that time to spend with his family. Whereas I, I'm by myself, so I can create more and get more stuff out. So um, let me just, um, Carol Baskin. All right, let me just, um, here we go. So uh, a gentleman by uh, John Tusio from, uh, is talking about Carol Baskin. Do you know who that is? Me? Yeah. Uh, I, no, no, I don't. All right, maybe, um, yeah, I'm not sure who Carol Baskin is, but okay, so let's carry on with this. Um, so we're talking about online comic sales for um, fun time. Now, there is not often that people, you know, because people have different talents and comic book artists aren't very good self motors, especially yeah. in New Zealand. And um, and I've noticed that, I've noticed that like when I talk to people, I go, hey, uh, would you like to come on here? and you know, discuss what you, you know, what you're creating. They go, oh, no, no, I'm not really, really keen to do that. But then they'll go, well, I'm not getting sales. 
<laughs> I'm not selling my comics. And the thing is that it's really, it's really hard when you, when you have a good product, but you don't want to have people promoting it because they're just shy. And this is the thing about creators. We're very shy, unlike me, because I'm very talkative and very out there, but the certain creators, they're very introverted. And, uh, and how do they, um, how do they actually, how do you get these guys to actually come out of the shell to put work in, into fun down comics? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I said it early on in our discussion that our workshops have been the lifeblood of the community here. Um, so just as as a result, you know, we're, we're a group of people drawing comics every month. Um, uh, uh, so, once. Um, Right, there we go. So, gentlemen, um, yeah. So I've got John, so, um, gentlemen, talking about uh, Joe Exotic, Carol Baskin. These are things I don't know about. So maybe someone will let you know uh, what they're about. But let's, yeah, back to working with creators. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those comics, yeah, so our comics as well. I brought them up. Um, um, yeah, yeah. So as as I said, we've benefited from that local community. So. The publication has always just been a natural flow on from there, uh, making the publication available to our local guys and girls, um, and then extending it out to creators around New Zealand and then inter international. So it hasn't been a huge issue. Um, I, I think, you know, we've benefited from the publicity just being at armageddon um meeting people meeting artists from artist alley that always mm. that always helps but you, you will get sent emails from random people that i haven't met before um from yeah. comic artists and writers and that's how i've got gotten to know a lot of them is they just mm. suddenly send their submission through um connect with them okay. through facebook that's how it happens it's very it's very organic it really is so um You've said that like how previously you've got work from, you know, that's been left over from um, submissions from previous things and you're going to this one. During this time, have you had um, creators reach out to you and say, hey, look, I've got a bit more work. I've been able to do a bit more work because I've been out of work. I've been able to concentrate more on my artwork. Here's a couple more pages that I've been thinking, you know, I was not going to be able to do, but now I have done it. How is this new, um, you know, have you been able to do a new, you know, the new, um, have you been able in this time to put the new uh, issue together? Yeah, yeah. So, um, pretty much what happens is after the each issue is published, then there's about a six, a six month lull yeah. between, um, and then around the middle of the year we start putting out those calls for submissions. That's when they start flowing through. That's when you see a bit of activity. Um, so i mean like i say it's just really weird with what's happened with COVID 19 because yeah. our workshops obviously april cancelled may probably won't go ahead um one of our members richard floated the idea should we do a zoom workshop um so we just need to put that out to the community to see who's interested um i don't yeah. know if, if if we're sitting there for five hours just drawing with a zoom conference whether that's going to work so i think it would be more of an opportunity just to catch up for half an hour 60 minutes have yeah. have a chat see what people are working on and mm. i think that would actually be a good opportunity to get people talking about publication mm. and um just get a bit more involvement there so well uh our local um creative community uh creative northland put together a a, a facebook page uh, called ISO creations. So when you so basically isolation creations, um, based what you meant that like they invited everybody, um, you know, in the arts locally, and they said, look, show us what you're doing right now. Uh, if you're doing anything during this creation period, just show us what you're doing. And people would post like um, images, and you get to see these images of what people are doing, especially you know, some were uh, centric to lockdown, and some people were just doing stuff. And uh, one of the um, I just noticed on uh, Linda Bell, uh, Linda ball i think it was she made these um you know 50 by 50 uh um paintings who's a local artist and she was putting them on um instagram and saying hey these are about to go up you know stuff like that because 
everybody's basically doing a lot of um you're gonna make me seasick by moving around like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like those days I'm like, oh wait, it's moving. It's weird watching someone move around like that because it's like, you know, it's like a like a um, a dolly shot. Yes. Uh, that's <laughs> for, for you guys film and filming reference. Um so do you think it's a bit too late to do the Zoom thing, or um, are you expecting, you know, because um, with you guys um, in Christchurch, you already have your group, um, or whether you think you still need it now? Do you think, um, did you put, you know, have you put a call out to say, hey, who's interested? Because I think... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so not, not as yet. Uh, so Richard, um, Rick, he suggested it this week, and um, I, I said that, I, I know a few of them in our group. Yeah. They're, bit, they're not so good with technology, so I don't know how that will go for them. Um, but still, hey, I, I think, you know, this is a great conversation, and I'll have a chat with Richard and say, hey, you know, what can we set up? Um, and then just see who, who's willing to get involved. I must say, I've actually been really surprised at how quiet the community has been hmm. during the lockdown. So there has been some activity um, from Tony Scanlon, Ruth Boyesk, um Darren Schroeder and Ryan Scott, yeah. who have all contributed to an ongoing jam comic. It's about yeah. three or four, three or four panels in. Um, a jam comic, by the way, is a comic where it's like one person starts drawing a panel, it gets passed on to another artist to continue. That's and awesome. it evolves. It, and it, yeah, you get some of the weirdest and craziest ideas and storylines. Yeah, one of the cha- one of the challenges of being the next artist is trying to actually have a co- cohesive storyline. Um, I have a bit of a reputation from trying to throw in a oh, bit of a spanner. S- spanners in the works, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I don't know, maybe that's just how how I viewed it. Yeah. Um. So that's been happening. It's still not a lot yeah. of involvement. So I've been really yeah. surprised. Let's let's do, we'll do the Zoom. I have a chat with Richard, and we'll set that up, and um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Well, it, it goes back to the whole idea of the fact that artists are quite extroverted uh, and quite emotional. And um, I've mentioned, you know, on several panel, um, panels that I've discussed that uh, my concern was that this lockdown and isolation would um, send, pe- send people who, you know, because artists are quite uh, emotional people, might send them into a depression, which is mm-hmm. highly likely and high, of high cons- was of high concern to me because I, um, being someone who, like that, you know, uh, of that mindset, I understand that people can get a bit, um, bit down when they can't be in connection with other people, and uh, that's why I did started doing this because it was like, hey, you know, look, this is you know, and us in our comic book and pop culture community, uh, we can still connect in our homes. Despite the fact we're in isolation, we can still connect to each other and see what everybody else is doing. Hey, so we can't go to uh, conventions, we can't put on, um, you know, our events or meet each other, but we can still have discussions to see what's going on in our different communities. And it's been really good. And like, I, I got invited to Discord by Drawfest, and I got on there, and I just couldn't, ha- I couldn't understand the the platform, right? I like you're talking about Zoom, I. I couldn't even do the Zoom platforms because I couldn't understand it. And I was like, well, I can't do that. So what if I invite people to come to me, <laughs> right? What if I get people to come and talk like this to me and then we can uh, let other people to see what's going on in the community. And I think, you know, you look, you're talking about 29 years of the Funtime comics. That's an amazing history to have, especially in his own comics, because, you know, um, you can both, you know, if you're just a comic book creator, you do your six issues or two, three issues, and that's you for a few years, you know. But when you're doing something as part of some um, a long-term vision that you guys have had with this, even though you have different editors with different ideas, uh, and where you've come from, black and white, mag- um, you know, pamphlet type magazine, to uh, colored cover to now a proper. Sorry, I don't have my. Um, it's somewhere in the cupboard, you know, in the boxes. But a proper, perfect bound, and by perfect bound, it means square bound like that, oh, yeah. right? That's right. A yes. graphic novel. To a you know full color, amazing work is a uh, you know is a testament to how much work you guys have put in, and I think um, it, um, th- there's um, you know there is a chance and opportunity in this time to basically go, look, this is a great book, you know um, it, 
And the other thing is that you guys aren't, are you guys digital? Do you guys put some work on digital to showcase it or do you just make sure that's all in print? Uh, it, it, currently, it, it is all in print. Uh, there is an, a comic archive on our website. The website is it's very out of date. Uh, we are right. working on an up-to-date site. Um, we'll keep the archive there, though. Um, yep. The archive isn't everything. It's, it, that was something Isaac was working through. Um, the plan and intention is to go digital. So whether that is Comixology or I, if anyone has some suggestions, I would love to hear. Uh, comixology takes too much money. Just don't don't go with Comixology. Like for sure, you'll be ripped off hard. And and the thing is, with what we're seeing with Comixology is they set the price. There's no negotiation. Mm -hmm. They set the price. So if you um, you're probably better off with something like uh, I mean I guess with Kindle or with um, Drive Through Comics because but the other thing is look as much as people think digital is a way to go and you know there's so much so much more you can do with with a print issue right so okay so okay so you can hand this to a friend to read you can show it to them go look this page here you don't have to have your wife uh, you know you don't have to be connected to the wi-fi and as much as people go on about like hey everything's digital i think a print copy is never going to beat uh, a, a digital copy is never going to print a print copy or a hard copy because i mean i can't you know here's my pile i can show this off i you know i don't have to go get a like a software on here to go this 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 and that's a great thing about having a print copy of um you know fun time comics because you can go oh look at this and um you can showcase little pieces of like uh, preview issues of digital, but I think the idea is you can't. And they've been they've been running these digital sort of ideas where you can go on and swipe and you get a digital comic in big stores and you're buying it that way. But I think um, I mean this is the reason I want to do a magazine because if you do a proper magazine, you can give things away with it, like stickers and bookmarks and all this other stuff that you can't have if it's a digital copy. And even though I love digital copy and I read a lot of digital comics, I still would prefer physical copies. And I think the job you guys do with the packaging of these these books are amazing. And I think that you know they deserve more sales. Um, they deserve more promotions for the from the community, right? From all of us uh, who are actually in this. And I think the other thing is a fear is that if we promote other people's work, we're going to get less sale of our own. And there's that nepotism that comes with that. And I think. If we're going to come out of this as a better country, as a better community, we can't look think of it that way anymore. We got to think of it: how do we help each other? Um, so I'll go. Well, fun time comics here, faction here. Hey, here's one of mine. If you, because you might not like my book, right? But of course, there might be some stuff in faction that you might like, or there might be some stuff in um, you know someone else's that you might like. Because not everybody's going to like your work, but. You guys do a lot. Um, you know, let's talk about what the different um, storylines are in um, in this um, in fun time because um, because you know it's not just one style. Mm. Mm. Do you do you want me to? Because I left all the physical copies in my office. Do you want me to grab some? Or take me twenty seconds. No, we just talk about it. All I mean, right, it's cool. fine. All right, so yeah, so you got everything from full color art to black and white art. Um, Sci-fi, so Sophie and Gill that I mentioned earlier by Ryan is is a soap opera, uh, space opera. It's episodic. Mm -hmm. The benefit of it is you can sort of come in at any episode and not have to go mm -hmm. back and read the previous. Um, whereas some uh, will have stories that are cont a continuous story across issues, so that can be difficult yep. because it takes years to read the whole comic. Mm -hmm. um, we've had works from Simon Fletcher. Uh, which again has been episodic. That's his real dreams, which is available in digital content. Um, so, real dream. How would I explain Simon's? Oh, I, I would never be able to do that justice. Um, yeah, they're like surreal so, dream world type scenarios. So you've got like how many pages are in this book? Because then you've got all these different artists and uh, writers. Now, so you have different genres. So it's not mm. a single genre and. Is it like yeah. a mature reader's book? Because, or is it like all ages? Do you guys have a theme for each one? Or, yeah. So on the back, 
Um, if you go right back to the first original fun time, it says um, best kept from the hands of children. And I haven't got the cover in front of me, but I have a feel, feeling that there's a pair of severed hands on the cover. Um, I'm going to be corrected by someone later. I'll correct myself, I'm sure. The yeah. idea was, look, it, it was never intended as a children's publication. So some of the content right. isn't child friendly. Um, that said, there's, there's, not, there's really never anything extreme. Um, even years ago when they did the R18 issue, it was more of a parody. It was almost. It was yeah. like, it was almost like giggling school kids, like, "Ooh, we get to do our routine." And, and it was in a brown paper bag, but it was, yeah, yeah, and obviously not simple for children. But it wasn't anything. It was really tame, really. Yeah. Just nature. But I mean, it was, um, it was but silliness. Because, yeah. yeah, but because you you don't want it in hands, of, you know, one or two stories, and they're getting to the hands of children. It's, I mean, you'd be just being on the safe side saying, hey, this is for um, 15 ups, yeah. right? Um, on, uh, on, the, on, the back, on the back cover, it always says some content not suitable for children. Um, yeah. Look, you know, one of my passions would be to do a fun time aimed at kids. And we have yeah. discussed this over the years. We, two, three years ago, we put a proposal out, hey, we want to do fun time junior. Please send in your submissions. It's never taken. It's never happened. Uh, mainly because we did not receive enough submissions to fill a full um, version aimed at kids at the Armageddon Expos. I get school and public librarians coming up to us saying, "Hey, is this suitable for school kids?" And I have to say no, yeah. which is why you know we'd love to have a version that is suitable, um, age appropriate. Mm -hmm. So then we could, with the idea to be able to distribute it through schools. Uh, across New Zealand, and well, look, this is the thing. I mean, like, let's yeah. just stop there and talk about this. Like, okay, so having something that's, uh, you know, maybe twenty twenty one, if you put together something for schools, right? For, I mean, not for, for schools, but for age appropriate, you know, all ages. For now, you've got you've upped your sales because all the libraries are going to have, have it, all the schools are going to have it, and then you, you know now you've going to be able to have funding for the next things, and I think. I mean, I'm, I'm an opportunist um, when it comes to marketing and stuff like that because of my, my um, business brain. So, but the other thing there is people think they, they're going to be restricted by having to do children's work. But, and I've had people, I've said, hey, what do you think of doing this? And they go, no, nah, I'm not into that. But they haven't even challenged themselves. And this is with a lot of people in the arts community is that they... They don't want to step outside of their own thing because they think they're going to be restricted by it. But what mm. I think is that the boundaries actually make you challenge you a bit more, right? They make you think a bit more on how to um, to to create things specific to an age group. I mean, it's the same thing in Hollywood, right? They got to go. Well, we got to make a a to Toy Story for all ages, right? Or then we'll go and do like a R eighteen um, Deadpool. Because they know that there's a market for it, but the library, if if you've got like someone like a you know school library saying, "Hey, would be interested in this if you could do it in all ages," then that's like saying to your creators, "Going, guess what? We're going to get sales through this, right? Mm -hmm. And then you know we're going to be able to see your product in schools." And but get, the other thing of that is, what I just don't understand is that when there's when people see your work, that you'll get more work to do and I think this is what um, um, the people get I mean myself I, I, I because I'm a writer I can just write whatever <laughs> you know and I'll just go yo do this in horror do that in adult do that in toys do that in that but when you're an artist it's you know you especially if you're creating for your own self I think um, if you don't challenge yourself you're always going to be doing the same thing over and over again, and you won't find out what works and what doesn't work. So you've got to be multifaceted. And this is where we are at New Zealand right right now, realizing that we have to be multifaceted right now as creators, because mm -hmm. otherwise, if you're only going to do age of, you know certain age group, well, you're only going to be get that money there. But if you go to different sections or different genres, then you're going to be able to get different things. Um, what do you think is like like that's my take on it but what do you think um has um has stopped people from putting their work towards uh you know all, all ages thing okay. 
So we, we we experienced a bit of interest when we first put the proposal out for Funtime Junior. Um, and some submissions came through automatically. And I, unfortunately, we have not been able to print those because they've been set aside for Funtime Junior. That said, in the recent fun time, I, I finally just decided to move some to the regular title. I thought yeah. otherwise these are never going to get into print. Um, it, yeah, look, it's again, I haven't pursued it. I haven't followed it through. I haven't pushed for it. Um, even as a com community, we haven't really discussed it. I would for, say for two yeah. years. That said, I initially, what, what my actual thoughts are, um, and I think this may be the best direction to take, is mm. instead of trying to do a, a Funtime Junior that has completely new content, is actually to do a selection of content from various fun times from the years that mm. does hit that child demograph with yeah. new content. And then we, we, we publish that as a Funtime Junior number one. I think that would be the smartest way to do it. And then once we've got actually one yeah. issue out, then maybe yeah. we'll actually get more submissions because we've got a real comic book in our hands. Yeah. And then you've yeah. already already got the market for it. You've already got the sales there. So I mean, you could basically go to li uh, libraries and go, look, we're looking to put together this uh, this um, package for ki um, you know kids. Uh, can you pre buy, pre order them? And this is the thing that, like I was saying about printing and stuff, right? This is giving a, this whole lockdown is giving us as artists and writers and creators in New Zealand a huge opportunity to go after funding and um, backing that we haven't had before because we've been so busy and we haven't mm. had time to think about it. So you're right. I think that would work. And I think um, if, if the schools are saying that, you know, whoever, you know, if find a receptionist and go, or admin go, hey, uh, this is, send a letter out to all the schools, right? We're going to do a fun time comics of, you know, release of all our, you know, and we want to, um, would you like to pre-order? This is how much it's going to cost pre-order for your libraries, you know, and for your classes or whatever in schools. And this is the same thing that's happening in America. It's not, you know, because that's why comics is getting to the age appropriate thing. And the quality of comics has dropped is because they've actually marketed in to the age group without quality of writing. So they've dumbed down their stories. And this is what I think that harms, that harms public um, work is when they dumb it down, thinking that the kids would like that because they they think that the kids aren't smart enough to notice that they're actually doing it for the, their age group. But you can't do great stories without dumbing down for that age group. And I think, like you said, you already have so many good stuff already in your, in your guys' um, um, history there that you can just put it together with a couple all the new stuff that's been put together. I think it's a brilliant mm -hmm. idea because it, it it's um, because you already have the work right and and um, you know, I'm sure, yeah. I mean, even if I talk to our local, um, you know, if I talk to our local thing, um, you know, our library and and our community, they'll be like, yeah, well, why not? We This is the thing that people don't understand. The libraries have a lot of money budgeted from the government, right? This is taxpayer money. This isn't their own money. This is taxpayer money that the libraries have around New Zealand, the schools have, because it's public schools. Even the private schools have their own, you know, they have their money and stuff. So I think um, this is the thing to um, like we can just you know think about. But I mean, this is artists and uh, comic book creators have to think about it. This as well, that um, without dumbing down your work, you can still release it to the public through the libraries, and that can actually go into towards the putting it on the shelves and the and you know out in, in the uh, in the bookstores. But um, but I think we have to be smart as creators now if we want to get that money that we, because we're stuck in a really weird place in the econ economically, you know, uh, where people don't have money and stuff, but to, that means that we have to go from the individual to the group with the money. And, and yeah, and I, and I think it'll be, it might be a really cool thing to do, um, to go after that, um, you know, the library funding, because I've noticed that there's, um, you know, that, this, the other thing is that, like, the museum thing, right? You guys could have exhibition of your work in a museum, right? All the different releases. And this is what people, and galleries. 
to step to take what you have as a comic book and go, guess what? We've got to you know frame these up, put them on the galleries, and go look. You know, have a show off of of um you know a showing of New Zealand work, creative work. So I think. Yeah. yeah, this is because you guys came out of like not the, before the digital age, right? Twenty nine years ago, before the digital age, so you have hard copies of work, um, which is, you know. But then you're gonna have to have find someone like you're saying, JG, put their hand up and go, look, hey, I'll yeah, I'll take this on board, mm -hmm. and you know, because there's only so much you can do as a person, right? But there might be someone who's got a couple more hours for you can put it together, um, and. Um, you guys have a great group. You guys have, uh, you know, and I think um, having that great group, I'm sure there's someone quietly sitting in the background going, yeah, I've been thinking about this, but I just haven't had the opportunity, right? It always happens. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think um, when people become aware of opportunities, then they can, yeah. But sometimes you have to hold people's hands, you know, to lead them slowly before they take that position. But hey, um, I've taken a lot of your time. We've got nine more minutes. Um, so in closing, tell us, um, yeah, tell us what, you know, what, what we should know about Fundam Comics. Help. Yeah. Help. yeah. So, so last, so, year, so last um, year, um, drop um, that echo again, man. Echo is, again. That, is that, okay. Is okay. that better? Is that better? Yeah, it's oh, me it's typing. Sorry, bud. Um, All right. let me just yeah, yeah. There. So, yeah, carry on. Cool. Um, Yes, so so last year we we put out our first omnibus, so that collects issues twenty seven to twenty nine. Um, wow. The the purpose behind that is, you know, um, all the print runs are small runs. Mm -hmm. uh, the largest print one we've done is a hundred before, generally around sixty seventy five. So occasionally we've when we've um, sold out of an issue, we've done a second print run. But we figured as we get a bit of a, a catalog going, especially of the graphic novels, let's reissue them as omnibuses. Um, it brings down the production price. It keeps the issues in print for longer. And, you know, we can we can do those in really um, short runs. Like the last, the first omnibus print run was 25. Um, and we will, there will be a, a second print run of that because we've almost yep. sold out. And that's where we're going to start targeting How libraries. How much is it worth? How much is it uh, I, I should know this. I'm I'm fairly sure on our site, it's on our website, it's thirty dollars. Um, it, right. it generally it on, generally retail. Right. Put one aside yeah. for me. All right, just just uh, yeah, we'll do. put one aside for me. Cool, put, cool. Make um, sure so you put one aside for me. So that was three issues. We're actually now at the point now where we can collect uh, the last three issues together as a second omnibus. Yeah. But we'll we'll wait a year or two because we've still got a huge stack of you know um back mm. back stock. Now mm. I um. Talking with, I know we haven't got long, but talking with Jeremy from Arkham City, he actually said, hey, have you thought about doing the whole back catalogue as an omnibus? Um, yeah. He, he thought that would, he, he was really interested. And I know libraries yeah. would probably love that. That's that was my next work. thought. That was my next so, thought. Like, look, um, yeah. if you do, uh, because there in our library, I'm, I'm sure everywhere else, there's an adult section, right? Mm. And, and there's the same thing we're talking about before about funding. Like, Hey, if you do it, omnibuses are amazing right now, right? Because you know you can you can basically collect the whole bunch in one series, and it saves you money, so mm. you're not buying like per issue. And and Jeremy's right. I mean, I know Jeremy well, and he's very smart. And um, and this is going to be you know um, having something like this for comic shops is going to help to help New Zealand comics even further. And um, yeah. Carry on, bud. Yeah. Uh, so the other the other things, yeah. So, so we'll go back. I don't know whether we'll start from issue one and then forward, yeah. or whether we go back twenty six and go backwards that way. We'll, we'll see. The problem is, there's a lot of scanning to do f f to achieve that. So it's a long term project. Um, the other thing is, um, so we put out a special um, earthquake issue after the Christchurch quakes in 20, yeah. 2011 It came out. Um, we're coming up for the tenth anniversary. Mm. Wow. That's out of, I know, I know, right? That's out of print. Yeah, I thought, oh, we were going to talk about that, but yeah, we carry on. Maybe we have a follow-up. I oh, know. So maybe when we actually publish it, the idea is yeah, to do... Yeah, let's do um, that. Let's, yeah, let's do a follow-up. So, so we're going to... The idea is to, is to re, um, re-release it 10 years on, this time as a perfect bound book. Um, 
because that's what the libraries want. They can't put the you know, saddle stapled booklets exactly. on the shelves. So exactly. and they and they love the earthquake one because of the content and what it means. Yeah. And let's get some new comics. Hey, we are we ten years on, and then then release that new new version. So that's certainly on the agenda. So we're looking at um, Fun Time Omnibus, Fun Time Earthquake re-release, um, the kids' version at some point. But really, the biggest thing for us is actually getting more of the community involved and putting their hands up to, to actually yeah. do things. And the truth is that actually has to – someone has to lead that, and mm. otherwise it's not going to happen. Um, mm. I'm in a position where, okay, if I want to see these things happen – maybe i actually just need to start tapping on people's shoulders and say hey look right get involved we need your help um yeah. and so there's that so then you know it's really sales distribution if we get a distribution channels locked down have it systematic um yeah. but again as someone putting their hand up and willing to volunteer uh bob gibbons he 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 um faithfully pursued the Christchurch libraries and as a result fun time is now and is bought regularly by Christchurch libraries mm. Yeah, you know, the aim for us is to be able to have all the major libraries around New Zealand just subscribe yeah. to Funtime. The other thing, um, we have I have discussed with Richard, um, a, a Patreon. Yeah, he was he was surprised we didn't have one, and I started looking into it. A few publications do it. The idea would be a monthly you pay a monthly price, and when the new issue comes out in our April, October, is automatically um sent to you. Yeah. Because that's going to help our print schedule as well. You know, if we know we've got 30 people signed up as Patreons. Cool. That's right. 30 issues already um, bought, pre-bought. Mm. So so there's a few things, you know, it would almost be worth a, a year on from this conversation seeing, okay, what did yeah. we achieve? But really, it's going yeah. to be who's, will, who's willing to get involved at a community level. So, so I'm putting awesome. a shout out. If people are yeah. watching this. Like, yeah. And, and the me. other thing is that you're going to find that um, that some won't that you have won't, but out of the ten, one or two will. You know, and this mm -hmm. is what happens mm -hmm. in leadership when you're leading that not everybody is going to catch on to what you're trying to do. And I think, uh, but that's what I mentioned about the whole about people being in introverted as artists and um, they don't want to be out there. But some of them might actually want, like, don't mind sending off letters. You know, sending off emails, and um, mm -hmm. even though while we've been having this conversation, I've been my my own brain's been going on about, hey, why don't I hit the libraries up about the magazine, right? So I could do the magazine. You 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 do all the graphic novels, and while I'm talking to the guys about the graphic um magazine, I'm gonna go, well, hey, have you guys why why isn't there any fun time um, comics in here? Mm -hmm. You know, and that sort of thing. That's what I'm talking about, like um not worrying about our own self, but actually saying, hey other people have other things that you might like and that, that's how that we're gonna yeah I, I don't know we want to finish up that takes me back to new zealand comics creators because really that should be i think that should be the role of new zealand comic creators not just the events yeah but a, just a distribution network so we're actually utilizing we we connected with everyone producing stuff in new zealand and right. you know we got one or two people from our group actually contacting the libraries or the shops and right. saying this, this is our catalog you know hey yeah we've got fun time we got what plunge is doing uh, your magazine i mean i look forward yeah. to hearing more about that um what earth Sin's doing um if there, all the other stuff that seem to be one-off projects but let's get those on our catalog exactly because then then you're like you you're basically helping everyone across the board you're not just uh label gazing and thinking about yourself yourself uh because now we don't we 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 have an opportunity to do promote everyone across the board and like we're saying there might be people who want uh, at all ages book for themselves for the family and those are the ones that mature ones for themselves and who wants to give away those ones to somebody else as a gift for christmas because of course christmas is coming up here we've yeah. missed out easter right we've missed out yeah. the whole easter period and so the next most important of course it's religious i'm not religious but i have religious family members so i appreciate what it means to all of us and even as not in religious i still it, having christmas together means a lot and giving presents means a lot so you know there's an opportunity at christmas time and you've got like um to be able to say hey we've got all these fun time comics gift them you know gift them out if you if you've got family members or friends who are into comics gift new zealand comic you know give mm. them out fun time comics for christmas as a present and um 
that's all I have to say. Look, guys, you know, you, you can't no longer sit back and expect things to happen in this new new age we live in, right? We all is, I mean, as a sci-fi writer, I've already dreamt these, this sort of scenarios where we're stuck in isolation, we're stuck in not having all those things, you know, and even written stories about uh, where you, where the small world gets smaller because of what's happened. So the best way we can deal with it now is actually say, well, let's promote every our own comics industry here in New Zealand. We have a very vibrant, creative uh, culture in New Zealand. Uh, we, you know, one of the probably because we actually can get government funding. We didn't talk about that because not many governments around the world actually fund the arts, but, but ours does, and and it's done in a different way around New Zealand. And so community based and stuff like that. But the other thing is we can't just think about ourselves now. We gotta think about what everybody else is doing. Like what you guys are doing in Christchurch, uh what's you know what Armageddon's doing around New Zealand and they moved over to Aussie as well. So they realize that hey we can't still stay here. We can move there. But then with that comes we can take our New Zealand comics over there as well. And this is this is the whole idea that you can't just sit back and expect people to do things for you. You have to reach out to other people to help you do things, and it's a great opportunity. This is what I like about um, this lockdown. It's given us so many, so much opportunity to actually connect with people that we never would have done before. And so, in passing, thank you, Lenny. Um, thank you, uh, Jason. Sorry, Mr. Lenny, uh, for joining me, and thank you for you know. I took an hour and a half of your time, and I'm sure your you know your family's going to be saying, "Hurry up, get off there." But uh, <laughs> thank you for your time. Um, in closing, is there anything else? I mean, we talked about the fun time omnibus, but is there anything else you want to say as we close? No. Hey, look, I just thank you for hitting, hitting me up um, and for this opportunity to talk. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's. I really love what you're doing. It's really good to connect, not just because we're down in lockdown, lockdown, but the the nature of the fact that we are a small population spread out across you know, a landmass size of England, mm. but a small population. Yep. We can actually be very disconnected, even though we're yep. in the electronic age, just because of geogra geography. Um, because, you know, we we need connections, and that's why we get together with local groups. And that's why Fun Time works really well, because those in Christchurch can physically get together. But thank you for doing this, because I think this way we'll start building those connections. And from the opportunity happens, more people become aware more people willing to put their hand up. So, hey, good on you for what you're doing. Cheers, brother. So no thank you guys for watching. Yeah, cheers. Um, so thank you for watching, guys. Um, I know it's a bit longer, but it's a good conversation we've had about what's happening with Fun Time. And look, it's when, you, when, you, when you're talking to someone about a 29-year history, it's not going to be a short conversation. So thank you. Uh, and thanks for, to Bill. Thanks to um, Jeremy. And, you know, to you know to people you know who are watching this if you know people in the libraries hit them up to say what get get fun time there if you know um your comic uh, your bookstores tell them about fun time comics get those books you know get the store um, um comics in the bookstores but really hit the libraries and schools up because not everybody you know is gonna um, say no to this because um there's an adult section of graphic novels Right. I mean, even I've spent I've talked to people into buying thousands of dollars of comic books for their, you know, for their mature reader section and libraries. And the thing about libraries is they don't mind supporting, you know, mm. local um, local groups. So, yeah, I mean, our, our plunge convention gets supported by the library. So, yeah. So thanks for joining me, um, Jason, and all the best, bro. I, I, um, I'm looking forward to this um, omnibus. I'm going to get, get some money together for that. And sure. um, I'm looking forward to what's coming from you guys because I think this conversation has opened up a whole lot of can of worms that you're going to be, you know, that people who are watching from your group is going to go, okay, I see where we are now. Now we have a collective idea. And not many people think my, um, outside of just a book. But I think when we have conversations, people like to see – what's really going on and it opens up mm. them to what other things that the opportunities that are available not just hey i just got to get my comic book and uh, comic pages in there and it's that yeah. but the yeah, other word yeah the other side of it hey i got to get promotions i got to get to armageddon i got to get this to um you know um, to stores i got to get some sales on this otherwise we won't get the next one funded 
and yeah so um christmas is coming up guys make sure and tauranga if tauranga armageddon is happening hopefully you guys will be there and all the best for the future and to everybody who's part of funtime um, comics thank you it's a great product um i'm looking forward to this omnibus so cheers uh thanks guys we'll um see you next time thanks jason cheers no worries thank you